And at 10, Chamber of Secrets. The Chamber of Secrets is one of the most iconic locations in all of Harry Potter, let alone Hogwarts. So, of course, it's gonna show up in Legacy, right? I mean, come on. Well, well actually, Yes and no. You're unable to access it, but it does still technically exist, since you can find the sink used as the entrance in Moaning Myrtle's bathroom, which has yet to actually be possessed, because she hasn't been killed. Also, it, it was built under the school, so it has to be there if the school is. Oh, and there's also the freaking basilisk, easter egg, where you literally watch a giant snake go through the hall in front of you in the Slytherin common room, okay? So, so much for using the plumbing, I guess. Uh, Twitter user Maxim Raggy posted a clip online that showed them exploring the Slytherin common room before they attempted to climb a set of stairs that couldn't be accessed. But before the game forced you back down, you can actually see the basilisk cross in front of you kind of like in the distance a little bit but it's still in front of you which I guess gives you a reason why you can't go up those stairs but it also begs the question who let this thing out if Tom hasn't gotten his letter yet and at nine horcruxes when players explore the restricted section of the library with Sebastian Solo they will end up passing an odd-looking moving book that Sebastian points out specifically that's because he calls it the secrets of the darkest arts but maybe you are unaware of its significance because I definitely was only hardcore Harry Potter fans would actually be able to pick up on the fact that this is the very same book where Tom Riddle, aka Voldemort, learns about Horcruxes, which then leads to the conversation with Slughorn about being able to split your soul into multiple pieces. The book, at least from what we know, was later removed by Dumbledore when he had the ability to do so, but Hermione still reads it after his death. Um, but yeah, if you're interested in how to make Horcruxes, the book is there, but as far as I know, you're unable to read it and definitely unable to make them. Although that would be interesting. <laughs> you just going around. Uh, I wish that like this game was kind of more like infamous in that sense with like the morality system thing. Instead of just like kind of forcing you to be a good guy, I think it would be fun. Especially for you Slytherins out there. Yeah, that's right. I know it. And it ain't Snape in a box. During the course of the game's main story, the player will head into the room of requirement with Professor Weasley. Yes, that kind of Weasley. Among the thousands of other items hidden by Hogwarts students over the past years and centuries, there are many secrets that you can find in this room, and plenty of other easter eggs. But one reference in particular is harder to spot than the majority. As players walk past a boar's head and then a painting of a witch in a pose similar to what I assume a French girl would make, they trigger a music box. The music box will only open this one time, so keep your eyes out unless you want to be like the majority of players who will miss the fact that the figure that pops out of the snake looks an awful lot like future potions master Siverus Snape, which is a whole other can of worms that I don't want to get into. because I. I break my brain enough with FNAF time travel, let alone Harry Potter time travel, but you know what, it's still a nice tribute to the late Alan Rickman. And it's 7D Gnoming. Although many memorable moments from the Harry Potter books didn't make it into the film franchise, fans can enjoy the added length and depth giggity of Hogwarts Legacy that provides a platform for these beloved scenes to finally get some attention they deserve. One such moment that fans hold close to their hearts is when Harry helps the Weasleys de-gnome their garden. In the game, players get a taste of this classic scene when they attend their first herbology lesson. Leander Pruitt, an ancestor of Molly Weasley, shares his own memories of de-gnoming and how he used to swing the gnomes around until they were were dizzy before shooting them off as far as possible in the hopes that they would be too dizzy to actually make their way back to the garden. This entertaining and memorable scene is sure to delight fans of the books and provide a fun and exciting addition to the game. Although I kind of wish that we could have done it. Okay, that would be that would be a great mini game. That would that would be a fun way to ruin a joystick. Okay, and I swear I didn't mean for that part to sound dirty. And it's six elephant on a bicycle. Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. The third installment in the series is widely regarded as one of the best. I mean, I, I find it to be kind of bland, but I guess that's personal opinion. The movie is shorter and doesn't really have. Uh, that much going on aside from time travel, but again, like I said, I'm not touching that with a 10 foot pole. But one scene in particular that stands out in the film is when Harry and his fellow Gryffindor classmates in their third year are sampling an assortment of sweets in Gryffindor Tower. This small but memorable moment showcases the boys hilariously impersonating various animals brought on by the candies, including an elephant and lion. Until Harry tries one that transforms him into a freaking steam train or something. I don't know what happened there. He looked like my mom after I leave a, a spoon in the sink for too long. But, interestingly enough, fans of the series can actually eat the same sweets in the game. 
and have their effects as well. Yeah. By visiting Honey Dukes and finding the elephant on a bicycle poster, players can enjoy these magical sweets and you can be an elephant on a bicycle, or you can be a lion, or you can be a spoon in the sink. Halfway through into number five, Wendelin the Weird. Wendelin the Weird was an eccentric British medieval witch who was famous for being burnt at the stake no less than 47 times in various disguises. Yeah, that's right, damn straight. During the Middle Ages, muggle witch hunts were at their peak, alright? Kind of obvious, you know, Salem. Uh, stemming from the desire to experience a pleasant tickling sensation from the flame freezing charm, Wendelin took it upon herself to be captured no less than 47 times in various different disguises and looks to be repeatedly burnt at the stake. With the use of the flame freezing charm, the pyres were rendered harmless, creating only a gentle tickling sensation, which Wendelin enjoyed immensely. That's a kink I didn't expect to learn about, but hey, it's a thing. During the 1890s, a tapestry of Wendelin the Weird hung at Hogwarts Castle. A tapestry that you can find in Hogwarts Legacy. One that quite a few people have also noted looks a disturbing amount like she who must not be named. You know, the author. Most notably for me though, I saw this in a TikTok which I think has since been removed and not by the creator, which sucks, because that's funny as hell. In it for Talking Mirrors. In Hogwarts Legacy, players will come across various talking mirrors that provide commentary on their appearance. These mirrors may offer compliments on the player's pa fashion or, or just natural born beauty, or they'll insult you to your very core. These talking mirrors are actually an easter egg as well, and they draw inspiration from Harry's experiences with talking mirrors at both the Weasleys and the Leaky Cauldron. Fans of the book series will also appreciate the humor and witty remarks found in the game that are very similar to the books. You can be greeted with pleasantries such as quote, what a lovely treat to have you walk by, be sure to pass by at least once a year, twice if you can, and quote, my what a striking face, you'll make quite the portrait one day, I wouldn't want to be hung next to you. Uh, which doesn't exactly feel like a compliment, but I, I get the sentiment behind it. Um, but also, you, you'll, you can experience the deepest of cuts like quote, oh, don't tell me, that's muggle fashion, isn't it? Can always tell. So very drab, which really hurts, okay? Because why are these mirrors hating on suits? Suits are cool. Exhibit A, look at any of the videos when I'm wearing suits. I should have worn a suit for this video. I am real. I wrote that when I was wearing a suit. So, yeah, it was supposed to be a Barney Stinson reference, but it, I guess it kind of fell through. Getting close to the end in number three, Trophy Room. A delightful easter egg in Hogwarts Legacy awaits those who venture up to the Trophy Room from the Grand Staircase. Here players can discover a Hogwarts Herbology Award presented to the current Herbology Professor Mirabelle Garlic. The trophy was awarded to Mirabelle in her seventh year at Hogwarts in recognition for her impressive work with flora, including mandrakes, mistletoe, boobo tubers, and bouncing bulbs. The latter two of which sound like things I shouldn't be talking about on this channel. The trophy room is also home to other nods to the main series, such as the casket that houses the Goblet of Fire. Overall, this hidden treasure adds another layer of depth and authenticity to the game, and also it offers players a chance to discover more about the world of Harry Potter. Plus, we all good, we all love a good trophy room, right? Don't we? Or is that just the, the king in me coming out? I don't know. Hopefully, the DLC that everyone is assuming we're going to get, even though it's five days after release will be a Triwizard Tournament one. Cause like, yeah, I like the Chamber of Secrets and all, but like a Triwizard Tournament would be so much cooler. And plus, depending on what you're in, you're in, you can like try to like sneak into the trophy room to put your name in the cup. Or like, I don't know, it'll actually be fun rather than just exploring something we've seen in how many other games? And ultimately, in a number two, Howler. Hey, looks like Weasley's got himself a Howler. That was more Australian than British, but whatever. Fans of the Harry Potter series will no doubt remember the hilarious and awkward scene where Ron Weasley received an angry animated leather from his mother. The iconic moment has been recreated in Hogwarts Legacy, providing players with a, a fun and, and familiar easter egg to discover. But the thing is, there is no specific location in the game where this scene can be found. Players can come across a student who's being scolded by a floating letter that loudly berates him in front of their peers, eventually exploding into hundreds of pieces of paper, just as depicted in the books and the movies. But yeah, you, you can't like wait around to find it. You have to find it by exploring the various interiors of the school, and then you can stumble upon this um, this tribute to Ron Weasley and his infamous letter. Um, 
Yeah, it's not a guarantee when or where though, but it should happen at some point during your playthrough. Just just keep an eye out so you don't miss it. And finally, in at number one, the Deathly Hallows. In the Harry Potter universe, the Deathly Hallows are legendary magical objects said to be created by Death himself. These immensely powerful items consist of the Elder Wand, the Resurrection Stone, and the Cloak of Invisibility. The Elder Wand is renowned for its unbeatable power, the Resurrection Stone can summon the spirits of the dead and even bring people back, and the Cloak of Invisibility is Kind, it's kind of in the name. If you're wearing it, you're invisible. Excitingly enough, these three items actually make an appearance in Hogwarts Legacy. Albeit in, in, in a limited capacity, because let's be honest, that makes sense. During the third Keeper trial, players are transported to a storybook world where they can encounter the Deathly Hallows. Though players can't necessarily wield them in the game, this subtle nod to the books and movies will no doubt thrill fans who wanted to actually see these in the flesh, or as close to it as they can get. But then this also begs the question, how did Dumbledore get the wand? Or how did like James get the cloak? And how did the stone get in the snitch? But I guess then again, this is also in a storybook, so maybe it's just replicas in the book. Or, or, or I don't know, maybe Dumbledore just like kept them after his trial, because he's a badass. Number 10, Key of Admittance. This puzzle is less of a direct puzzle that you need to find the answer to, and more like one of those mystery puzzle games where you have to locate the right items and figure out where best to use them. This puzzle only becomes accessible following the completion of Neem Fitzgerald's trial. Once this quest is complete, you will be able to access the headmaster's office. Once inside, you will need to be at level 3 for or unlocking locks with your Alohomora spell. Unlock the level 2 lock, climb the stairs, and unlock the level 3 lock at the top. In this room, there will be a key on the desk, the key of admittance. You can now take this key back down to the headmaster's office, head down the spiral staircase, and from there, head to the end of the hallway, where you will find a big ornate metal door with a large keyhole in the center of it. The key of admittance opens this door and inside you will find a loot chest and a staircase that leads to a field guide page and two more chests. Woo! And friends, before we move on to our next spot on this list, if you love what we do here at Top 10 Gaming and if you want to see more Hogwarts Legacy content here, you can let us know by clicking that subscribe button. Number 9, Year 5? Now admittedly, it's important to note that I've only actually clocked about 15 hours of gameplay so far myself in this game, and much of that has actually been spent not necessarily grinding out that main quest, but exploring and taking in the details of this world. Honestly, there's so much to see and explore and do, and I could just probably wander around Hogwarts and have a great time. And also, all of that stuff is just within Hogwarts too, never mind the world outside, which is also amazingly vast and detailed, at least as far as I've seen thus far. When you start the game, however, you you might be surprised to learn that you are a new student to Hogwarts who is in fifth year? So alas, no boat ride into the school for us, in fact no conventional magical form of transport to the castle really at all. Instead we start the game off by going on a mysterious adventure where we very nearly die before arriving safe and sound but you know, a little worse for wear at Hogwarts, having to find an unconventional way to the school with the help of our escort Professor Fig. Why are we starting as a fifth year and are there others who have done so? in the history of the school. We don't really know off the bat, in fact there are many questions left unanswered upon your start of the game, and even 15 hours in, I really only have a little bit more information in regards to others who started in their 5th year. Number 8, Ancient Magic. It seems something we possess in this game that makes us unique is Ancient Magic. What is Ancient Magic? That's a good question. For me right now it's the ability to wandlessly, magically, and yet kind of seemingly telekinetically <laughs> hurl objects at my enemy. But what it means to you changes as the game goes on. Our skills in ancient magic as a protagonist also help us seem to see things that others can't, seeing remnants of old magic left behind, which we are able to also in some cases tap into and even unlock. It turns out we aren't the only chosen one with this ability, but that perhaps in each generation a slayer is born. No, in each generation one witch or wizard ends up gaining this unique power. It's an ability that is acclaimed as being supremely powerful, but so far, other than a limited little bit of history, that's really all I know. Again, the ancient magic angle seems to be a mystery even to our own character, and one that unfolds throughout the course of the game. No explanation given straight from the start. So. 
it's very interesting how they just kind of throw you in and they're like, there's a lot of things you don't know, so just figure it out. <laughs> you're like, all right. Even your character is like, why is this the way it is? And you're like, yeah, why is it? Number seven, follow the butterflies. This is a quest that you can unlock in the game following your completion of the Jack Jaws rest quest. This quest is obviously not itself super secret in regards to the game, you know, not telling you about it as it does exist in the game as a named side quest, follow the butterflies. However, the reference is not necessarily explained and that is the secret that I'm gonna let you in on here. This one is actually pretty niche yet an awesome Easter egg I gotta say in reference to the Harry Potter film Chamber of Secrets. When Hagrid tells Harry, Ron, and Hermione to follow the spiders into the Forbidden Forest so they can learn more about the basilisk, Ron laments this task given to them as they head out to follow the spiders, asking, why spiders? Why couldn't be follow the butterflies? Sadly, Ron Weasley is not even born yet here as the game takes place way, way, way in the past. But I can imagine this would be a quest that he would appreciate were he here. Thanks to Andy Reloads on YouTube for catching this very sneaky reference, by the way. I love it. It's such a good reference. Number six, door puzzles. Something the game doesn't tell you is how to do the puzzles. Though, I mean, of course it wouldn't. What would be the fun in that? However, as much as I love puzzles, I even struggled with some of what I would consider to be somewhat more basic ones. Or, you know, maybe they're not that basic and I'm just not giving myself or the game enough credit here. Maybe I should be like, you know what? I'm sure other people struggled. That's why I'm gonna tell you about it. Here's the deal. I'm gonna let you in on one of these pretty important secrets because you're gonna see these door puzzles pretty much soon after you start playing. I was close to solving this one on my own. I did end up needing a little bit of help, so I'm gonna help you as well. So these are puzzles you can find all around Hogwarts, and the problem really comes from the fact that there is a specific cipher page you actually need to have so that you have all the info to solve the puzzle. Although, even on my own, honestly, without the cipher, as I said, I was pretty close to just figuring this one out myself. I just had the numbers a little bit off. On the doors, you'll see two circles, usually with a number in the center of the circle. On the ring of each circle, there will be three symbols. These symbols can either be a number, a type of magical animal, or simply a question mark or a double question mark. Near the doors, you'll also see what appear to be kind of like dice embedded into the wall. When you interact with these dice, they're basically gonna shift faces, revealing a different outward face featuring a different magical animal. The same magical creatures that are featured on the archway above the door that you're trying to open. You don't need the cipher to solve these though. All you need to know is that on the arch, the creature on the bottom most left represents a zero, and the far most right represents a nine like this, with each one basically ascending or descending respectively by the value of one, so like nine, eight, or zero, one. The numbers in the center of the circles are what the three symbols surrounding add up to, with the question mark or double question mark representing the wall dice nearest the door. With this information, all you need are some basic arithmancy skills, and you'll have these doors open in no time. Who needs Alohomora, am I right? Number five, deadliest weapon. When I saw this in Hogwarts Legacy, I, I, I actually figured figured this would be like my calling for combat tactics. I didn't need a guide to tell me that. I was like, this seems OP. We are talking about one of the first magical plants you're going to encounter in one of my all time favorite classes, Herbology. In your first Herbology class, Professor Garlic first introduces you to Mandrake Root before she has a student escort you to visit the Chinese chomping cabbages to feed and also really to harvest them, giving you some cabbage ammunition to start out with, but also acting as a demonstration for how the cabbages work in the game and can be used in attacks. Players have already put time into building their cabbage army and enhancing their plant stats, and it turns out they actually might be one of the most OP weapons in the game. So my feelings about this initially were pretty correct. Do you not believe me that cabbages are OP? Just Google it. Rognar Athio, Rognar Athio on YouTube actually has kind of a demonstration video with tips and tricks for anyone who wants to check out and exploit this insanely powerful weapon, which can reportedly help you to take down bosses in seconds. And there's tons of guides out there as well for how to sort of max your stats on cabbages. <laughs> but make sure you build this quickly, as at any point, magical plants, including Chinese chomping cabbages, could be nerfed by developers, because that's how like crazy effective they are. Number four, viaduct bridge puzzle. This puzzle seems even more obvious than the door puzzles to me, but I know there are those out there who have found it equally, if not more, challenging to crack. So don't worry, no judgment there. This is uh, puzzles. Puzzles are hard. The viaduct bridge is the large one that exists between 
between the library annex and the Great Hall. It is awesome. It is inspiring. It is a bridge. And it has a puzzle on it for you to solve. In order for you to even attempt this one, though, there is a certain spell that you are definitely going to need, unlike the previous door puzzles, which you know don't require you to have learned really any spells to attempt to solve them. For this puzzle, you need to know the spell Incendio, because we are going to need to set some because we are going to need to set some braziers on fire. That's right, brazier, not brazier. On the side of the bridge nearest to the library annex, you will notice on the floor a cipher. The cipher tells you what number in Roman numerals you need at each brazier in order to unlock its secret. The cipher itself is actually a trap door, which will open once you have successfully matched each symbol to the correct number on the brazier. To adjust the Roman numeral on the brazier, you must cast Incendio to ignite it, and then you simply interact with it to set it to the right number. Number three, the basilisk. This one straight up gave me chills when I was reading about it. Oh, I'm getting them now. Oh my gosh. The basilisk is a creature that guards the chamber of secrets in Hogwarts. But while it's been mentioned in the books, seen in the movies, it is not expected to appear in the open world RPG based off of both. Sad. Most people were wondering if, like the Room of Requirement, Hogwarts Legacy also featured this hidden area at the famed school of witchcraft and wizardry. But alas, that initially does not seem to be the case. I say initially because it turns out the basilisk has been spotted, and also because, you know, I mean, this game just came out, so there's things we could still find later. And this user that did spot the basilisk even managed to live to tell the tale somehow. Castile JA on Twitter posted a short video from their PS5 playthrough where they were exploring the Slytherin common room and went to head up some enchanted stairs, but couldn't. At the top of the staircase, down the hall, where they weren't able to go, but where they can see, you can see what appears to be a giant serpent passing through a perpendicular corridor, leaving the player to assume they had just somehow spotted this mythical basilisk. However, some in the comments have claimed this could be an enchanted door or even a glitched out monster of the lake, since the Slytherin common room does exist in the dungeons of the school and, you know, is kind of beneath the lake itself. Number two, Slytherin Saint. Well, not something apparently in the game, at least not as far as we've seen thus far, there is an acknowledgement of the Chamber of Secrets. The entrance to it has a field page guide for you to collect, though. Well, not something apparently in the game, at least not as far as we've seen thus far, there is an acknowledgement somewhat of the Chamber of Secrets. The entrance to it has a field page guide for you to collect. This field guide page is located in the girls' bathroom near the Slytherin common room. The field guide page is simply titled Slytherin Sink and goes on to read as follows. Scratched into one of the copper taps on this seemingly ordinary sink, and the girls' toilets is a small snake. No one knows what it means. Number 1. Chamber of Secrets While in the movies and books it's mentioned that the Chamber of Secrets has been closed off for years, with only Tom Riddle ever being mentioned as the one to open it prior to Harry doing so, it has been stated that there is visible evidence in the chamber that it has been open more than once since its construction by Salazar Slytherin. The fact that a descendant of Salazar's is also currently at the school among us fellow Slytherins, who goes by the name of Ominous Gaunt, honestly one of my current Hogwarts crushes in this game, could mean there might actually be some way to open the chamber. Though I imagine Ominous wouldn't necessarily be seeking to do so, since he actually prefers to distance himself from his family and from the Salazar name, ashamed of his ancestors' preference for only pure blood magic users, and you know, ashamed of like sort of the dark wizards and his family. So I don't know if he's going to be into opening the chamber or if it's possible, but just a thing I noticed. 